Hey guys, welcome everybody. Um, now we are going to take a look at the three account method. The reason like I'm focusing a lot more on fi finances these days is because, um, you know, once this crisis is over, like you're see going to see like more inflation in Germany. So it is like super important that you are like getting a bit more smart about your finances. Like you're already here, you're already trying to be independent and you know, taking care of your own bills and your own finances. So this is also the reason why like you should like also have a better idea of like what kind of places your money should stay at. And I'm also like talking about the students who are like, you know, financing their studies with the help of the blocked account, but also like employees who are just like, you know, having a full-time income. So both of those things we are going to cover in this live session. Um, I'm going to wait a bit and see like if a few more students join and then we can like start the session right away. Nah? All right, um, if you have joined, welcome. So let's start this entire story of inflation and um, you know how you can like use different kind of like accounts in Germany to like protect your money from inflation. Because the 863 euros that you're still getting, this is still a decent amount of money. And even if you're like living frugally, you would be able to save quite a few bit, uh, bits and amount of money like, you know, on the side and like just kind of like put it in better places. Uh, take a look at these stories here. You know, like 2008 was the story of recession, like things kind of like jumped up at that time, but then measures were put in place and then the inflation like came down quite a bit. Inflation is essentially the loss in the value of money because everything else is going to get more expensive with time. Now, this could be like, you know, just the uh, normal hike in prices of the products or increment in wages, which makes the products expensive afterwards. No, so that like the government is forcing you to spend and not like, you know, just hold the money on the side. So these are a few different stories um, of like how inflation can affect you. And the thing is, like, if you're like anybody who hasn't like taken the finance topic like seriously so far, the important thing that many people forget is that over the long time, like your money is like always losing its value, right? So it doesn't matter if you're having like, you know, 10,000 euros saved up, you feel like after 30, year, 30 years, you still have like, you know, 10,000 euros. But that is never the case. Because like here, we are always talking about like nominal interest rates. So like the rates that you have that you are seeing everywhere written on these service providers, right? But essentially, because inflation is happening every single year, your money that you put aside 10,000 euros in your, you know, like Giro Konto or your current account, that is like losing value every single year. So like, let's say if it's two person, because I think in Germany's case, um, yeah, the recent number was around two person, uh, 2.13, 2.04%. 2 and m most probably here, it's 2020. Yeah, 1.67, but it's going to go up. Like that's the prognosis. Now, so like we, we keep it at two person and like we see these different kind of numbers. Um, the reason to like kind of like remember why we are like, ha why we have to like follow these numbers and everything is because like, Unlike in India or like, you know, other developing countries, we don't have a positive interest rate in Germany, right? This means if you're having your money in SPI, like like I used to have my money in SPI, like you are still getting like 3.5% interest or more. But in Germany, if you're leaving your money in the bank account, you're essentially getting minus month after, after month. No? Student accounts are free. Most of them are completely free. The online bank accounts and 26 tomorrow, Comdirect, all of monies and everything else like, you know, these are also like completely free, but you're still like losing money to inflation. Whereas like if you start investing money, even if it's like really small amounts, you would be able to like see how your money is actually staying afloat inflation. Inflation rises. So will your money that you've invested on the side. No? And these are like really important things to understand because these are the things that nobody else like teaches you in a, a completely different country, right? So we, we are going to discuss this um, and I'm going to like start with the story of the three account method. No? What the three accounts are, what do I mean by them, where you can find them, all of the details we are going to find here. I'm going to put myself up there so that you guys can yeah see this story. Just a second. Okay. All right. Now let me uh, kind of remove all of these big question marks. No? And see what the three different accounts are 
and why we are talking about these in this time now because of course like you have the inflation happen not the inflation you have the crisis happening right now now things are like the stock prices are falling down but because they are falling down it also like gives you this wonderful opportunity where you are able to like buy things for very cheap now i started investing when i turned 25 and that was like somewhere here first first january and at that time like the prices were still going up so it wasn't that bad at all now prices were going up everything's fine but then as soon as you realize that hey this coronavirus story is happening prices started fall and started to fall and right now like the people who are smart are actually rethinking about their finances and are seeing where else they can like invest the money um i had an interesting question Bhar roy thak were saying bharat why germany is not taking ser is not serious about corona roy they're trying their best i mean even if you look at the numbers so far they have been the ones who are able to manage it like very low and this is despite having i think 64000 or something like that uh, infected cases well that was not the topic but just because we are discussing let's like also take a look there no so if you take a look at the death rate like 9200 people have recovered and only 560 have died so it's like 6% death rate and if you look at the same in other countries like it's a lot worse uh, and the story with this is like essentially because germany like yeah they haven't like done anything seriously like i wouldn't even claim that yeah they they are, they are doing a great job or something like that i don't think so the only thing that they are good at is like already having like good facilities now they are already having one of the like maximum number of beds um in europe and so on and the death rate according to that is like very very less if you look at italy the death rate is 45% now if you look at spain i think it's also like really bad yeah it's 30% and if you look at iran i think iran is also decent yeah 17% it's also bad now but like in comparison to that like germany is like it's doing great so i'm like i'm not the person who can like complain about this right now like in the starting like that was of course like not so nice that they were like still bringing in like you know flights from china and everywhere else but like they are still like kind of were um prepared to like manage with this now But anyways like uh, you know like right now of course like the coronavirus this entire story is happening and that's why the stocks are like kind of just completely falling down and this is again the reason of this video na huh? because what you're going to see is in germany let's jump to the uh, screen already so you have your giro konto giro konto in germany are your current accounts na huh? current accounts some can also like call it like savings account but this savings account is pretty much like again having 0% per interest rate and i wouldn't even say 0% i would say like rather like you know negative because um, most of the german bank accounts they are charging anywhere from like minus 8 euros to like 13 euros every single month na as fees really important thing to remember right so like you have to like understand that this is not the same story that we are talking about like in india because in india at the same kind of like you know in the same right super important thing to understand but in germany that's not the scenario like you're essentially having like negative interest rates because they're charging you um, money every single month to like run your account the exception here is when you're a student na so student accounts are generally for free but like as soon as you become an employee they are charging you again but of course like you know if you are having like let's say n26 or there's a new bank called tomorrow or you have your uh, moniz or comdirect all of these bank accounts are then again like completely for free right So this is like something that you have to like kind of understand. Um Vinayak has a interesting question. Sayed is saying 8% or only 8 euro. Uh, Sayed it depends like from 8 euro to 13 euro that's what I'm saying. Na? No? Uh Vinayak is saying Bharat can you tell making extra money as our money is just in banks. Yeah, that's that's the story of this entire video. Na? No? We're going to like focus on that. 
So super important thing to th thing to remember, um, which is your Giro Conto and zero percent interest rate, right? Then let me just kind of like remove this story here. I don't need it right now. Okay. Then we are going to the next one. So the next one could be a fiscal conto. So what is a fiscal conto? It is like your more like your provident fund, like you know where you are having the money for a fixed amount of time and you cannot take out the money. So cannot take out the money, right? Now I'll show you some options for these. Uh, and, and I mean, these are like really interesting options because all of these things are just like the options you should know because like you're in a different country and you have to like understand where should you keep your money in different kind of places because nobody else is going to teach you these things, right? So let's take a look at the fiscal conto. So if you like go to Check24, this is like a really big German portal where you can like have different kind of comparisons if you want to take an insurance, if you want to like open a bank account or if you want to get a credit card or if you want to do like any kind of like thing related to finance many a times, like you would be able to have a really nice comparison here. So like I would definitely recommend if anybody is looking to like compare things, always take a look at the Check24 and like it just gives you a very nice idea. No? There's also another option called Tagesgeld Konto, but like I'm really skipping it because the interest rate is absolutely horrible. Like it's just 0.6%. It's like, it doesn't even make sense to like keep your money inside here, right? So this is the reason we are going to skip the Tagesgeld Konto because of the less interest rate. Like I just don't recommend this, but if you like still want to have some of the money saved in some like other place, you know, and like you're getting interest on that money, then 1.52% like and 1.42 percent these are the percentages that you will be able to get when you're looking at the fiscal conto or the money that you are not able to like take out before the time right so really important thing now let me take a look we are having some more interesting comments here what are your thoughts on the possible economic crisis should we still offer germany for march semester uh, i think that's a very interesting question and and the reason i'm like saying that uh, is because right now like there's not going to be any immediate effect like at least for the students who are coming here you know like if you're coming here as a student you still have like at least two years till like the things get better you know the the thing which maybe should be like concerning the students right now is the are the ones who are already studying right now who are already maybe in their last semesters or something like that like that is something which is you know a bit difficult and like this is going to be something that they have to get more creative about because right now of course every single company is going to try to like you know save the money or like put the money at a better place and you have to be like really worth the price that the companies are paying because if the company is paying you three thousand euros like per month salary they're not just paying you three thousand euros they're also paying all of the social contributions on top right so you have to like really kind of like put all of these factors uh, inside and like, you know, just like be a bit more serious about networking and like meeting people. Because if like people are still relying that they're going to like kind of just rely on different kind of job portals to like get a job afterwards uh, in this time, like that is definitely not going to be the case. Right. Like really remember this thing, like you have to be like more creative, like you have to talk to people, you have to see what kind of other opportunities you can get. And that's how you're going to like, you know, able to find jobs still in these times. And I'm going to like, uh, I'm building a course for it, like finding jobs in Germany. And that is going to like, kind of like really just pull you away completely from the mentality of just applying for the job portals at LinkedIn, at Zing, at Indeed.com or like monster.de, all of those things. None of that is going to matter because I will be able to show you much better ways with how you can apply for the jobs and like still get better results than kind of applying on a portal and just like waiting for the results for the long term. So yes, I mean, there are going to be economic con consequences. And this is like really the reason like you should be kind of exploring all of the options you have right now. Right? So like we were talking about target scale, this fiscal contour, you have like 1.5%, 1.4%, 1.4% and so on. But an important thing that you will see is that your money is like never put uh, in Germany. It's either in Latvia, in Malta, and like you know other like eurozone countries 
but it's not in Germany because like you're definitely not getting any kind of like good interest rate whatsoever. No? Even like one that is in Germany is like this credit plus, which gives you 0.55% like interest rate. Again, like it doesn't really make sense. So this is the reason like I kind of like still tell you that maybe who are the employees, maybe who are already working in Germany and like they want to like put the money aside for a while, like for them, Festgeld Konto could be something, but yeah, like the interest rates are just not nice. I mean, you would, wouldn't would even be able to like save your money from inflation. Look at the interest rate right now. It's 1.52%. And if you look at the inflation in 2020, um, it's 1.67%. So like you're still like lo lo losing money every single time or like every time like you're keeping it at sign, uh, keeping it in your bank account or even in your fiscal conto, right? So um, that's the story. And like, this is the reason like you have to see what kind of other options you have here. Like, let's say you have the option of getting like 1% on your money. In Giro Conto, you have 0%. In Festscale Conto, let's say you have like around 1%. And the, another like fun thing that could be uh, is like having a depot. No? So you have depot or like, you know, investing in index funds. Now, this is like not the story like mutual funds or something like that. This is a more passively managed fund. And it kind of just follows... Uh, different kind of criteria no so if you put money in like some specific stocks the issue with that is like every single time the stock is going up or down your entire money portfolio is going up or down right like if you put like 10 euros inside and like something goes up two percent like you're having like yes 12 what 10 euros 20 cents but afterwards the issue is going to be that once the thing goes down like your money falls down re really quickly too you don't have any kind of averaging effect that some companies are going up, some companies are going down, so that the money in the long run is still going up. Now, that is the issue with investing in individual stocks. But if you're like investing in index funds, and I like cover a lot more of it on like Brand Device channel, you can like take a look there, like about what the um, these index funds are. So like here you have the video German depots and MSCI, and about the chances of economic crisis and stock investing bases and basics of investing in Germany, like all sorts of stuff you have here, like related to, you know, uh, having like your finances sorted out. So in that story, like you have something still very interesting that you're able to like, you know, invest not just in one stock, but like a lot more number of stocks. Uh, if you invest in an index fund, you would be able to like invest, let's say in 1,643 different kind of companies. And this really like puts you, your like plus and minus to a overall plus. Now, uh, the issue with the um, mutual funds, you know, this is also a really good question. Abhi is asking, can you give some basic information on mutual fund investments in Germany? The reason like I do not like prefer or like kind of like even recommend mutual funds is because the mutual funds have really high like interest these managing fees. Now, if you have like an index, for example, the S&P 500 or um, your MSCI world and so on. The nice thing about that is that you are not having like a lot of, you know, uh, expenses in that. Like you are not paying somebody to actively manage your money. The issue with mutual funds, however, is that most of the times that you're paying a lot more money doesn't matter if you're like making any kind of profit there or loss like it just absolutely doesn't matter to them so this is like a really nice um, you know uh, how do i say description of what are the differences between etfs and funds the best thing about it is like you're still able to like sell your etfs anytime you want with mutual funds it's like still a bit problematic you can do intraday trading that means you can like buy in the morning you can sell in the evening now but like with mutual funds that that is not possible so like the experts who are managing your money in mutual funds like no matter if you're like making a loss or making a profit they're still getting their cut in index funds like the companies they do get a cut they do get a cut but it's like very very less 0.2 percent or something so like you're not essentially paying useless amount of money in just fees and everything now so this is the reason like etf is a lot better and you also can like you know take a look at these in just etf and stuff like i would like highly suggest to like kind of start like you know start watching the videos on brand device it will like really help you out and then you can see like what kind of different places you want to invest in 
right? But like one definitely very important thing is like if you're uh, putting aside some money every single month, like you can start with as less as like 25 euros per month. No? Put that money aside or 50 euros per month, put that money aside. And on that money, like you can have around like 8% interest rate. No? 8% like sometime even 9%. Like these things are like completely possible. And like when it starts compounding, the fun thing about that is like it just like really uh, grows your value of the money for a long time. And you're like definitely secure than inflation. Because inflation right now, if you take a look at the rate again, um, here's the graph of inflation. Like you're having like inflation in 2020 around like 1.67%, right? But like when you're like doing um, investing in the index funds, you're like getting a rate of like 8 to 9%, which is like very, very nice. And you're also not paying like any kind of fee, like in, in mutual funds, you're paying like 2 to 3% of fee. Whereas in index funds, when you're just like having like from 0 0.07 to 0.2% fee, like this is how less the fees is in index funds. So definitely think about it. Like, you know, these are all of the different kind of options you have. Because even if you start putting like 25 euros per month aside, no? this is first of all is going to be the 25 euros, which is going to be safe from inflation. That means like after one year, like, you know, the 25 euros that you have doesn't become 23 euros, doesn't give you the purchasing power of just 23 euros. Um, it like kind of like increases in value because you're getting the really good interest rate on top. No? So that that is a really nice thing and like if you are like serious about it if you're like planning to stay in germany for a long time and like you're saving constantly then you have like some really nice options now take a look um if you're like saving 25 euros a month in an etf now and the etf is just giving you like 7.5 percent return so like we're not talking about eight percent or nine percent we're just talking about 7.5 percent return and that money so here's the regelmäßige Einzahlung. So that's like 25 euros per month. And the one-time investment is zero. So you're going to see the comp compound interest like really works for itself. So after 30 years, you're going to have like 33.3 thousand euros just for the money that you're saving aside. 25 euros a month. No? And if you would have just kept it under your pillow, like it would be just 6,000 euros and rather like put also inflation on top. This is going to like actually be worth a lot less because of inflation right like just do the two percent and like compound it for 30 years so that's how less it is going to be so think about these things a bit because like in germany you don't have that easy system that you just you know like leave your money in the bank account because if you're leaving your money in the bank account you're still getting like just zero percent interest rate which is just absolutely useless like it is not going to be good for anybody uh, if you're putting it in fiscal conto, yeah, like, but you have to like, you know, leave your money there for like one, like one or two or three, four, five years, like depends. No? And like, if you're putting in a depot, then it's like really different. Then you can take your money out anytime you want. And this helps you a lot better in the longer run. No? Um, also, like, think about like what kind of like expenses you're having and how much money you can save aside. No? Like, these are all like really important things. Let's say, Let's do a quick cal calculation. Um, so we all know like for blocked account, no? blocked account money is generally 863 euros. We say 860 euros. No? So, and we are going to like take uh, some median ex estimates of all of these different things. The first thing is going to be rent. The rent could be anywhere from like 150 to 350 euros. Now, but let's say like 300 euros per month. That is like your rent. And afterwards, let's talk about groceries. Groceries could be for a single person like around 50, 150 euros a month. Now, your health insurance, like with TK and stuff, that could be like around 100 euros too. And then afterwards, what else do we have? We have our phone and internet bills. Now. On an internet, that could be, let's say, another 30 euros. No? And let's put even like something on top of that, um, these radio contributions that we have every single, every three months. No? So, or like some other kind of expenses, whatever it is, like we put 20 euros per month, even on top of that. So 
So this is like when you're already covered with with your groceries, you're covered with your rent, you're covered with health insurance, you're covered with phone and internet, and then some miscellaneous kind of things. So what do we see? Like how much money do we still have left? Now, here it's 450, 550, and then you have like 600 euros. This means like after the money that you're receiving from your blocked account, which you have to already show for 12 months now when you're coming to Germany, you're still having a nice surplus of 260 euros per month. Now, now this is the money you can put in different places. Like some of the money you should definitely build in having an emergency fund. Now, what is an emergency fund? Like just let's say like 1000 or like 2000 euros on the side that you're having. Just like have that money on the side. Like it's like really important. So try to build it slowly and slowly. And then other money, let's say 25 euros per month goes into investing. And how do you start investing? Like investing is actually like really, really simple. Like you just have to like choose a depot. So like either you go with Comdirect. Um, it's, it's a really nice um, depot in Germany where you can like, you know, invest in ETFs. And from ETF, I mean like in a really uh, broad index where like you have 1,640 companies, right? If you buy one stock of this index, that means you're investing in not just one company, but in 1,640, three different companies. No? So this is like really nice. This is the reason like we always say like when you're starting investing, like always start investing with index funds. And then afterwards, once you get like more used to it, or like if you want to get more used to it, then you can like kind of go more into detail. But I've seen like people who have like invested their entire lives just in the MSCI World Index. And then now afterwards, they're like kind of like really comfortable with their money. No? And if you look at the 10, 10 year like return rate, it's like around 9%, which is really not bad at all. No? Um, it kind of like trumps the inflation. You're, you don't have to worry about the inflation if you're saving the money on the side. It's not like losing its worth. Right, so like you can use, open the account in Comdirect, like the link I've given in the description, you can take a look there. Um, Trade Republic, I would suggest to the people who are having a EU passport or are having a permanent residence in Germany. Because like Trade Republic doesn't allow like, um, you know, people with temporary uh, residency to like open a depot with them. But Comdirect does that. A lot of students have their like accounts with Comdirect. It's also like one of the most famous ones in Germany. And when you're saving 25 euros a month, like, you know, opening and everything is completely free. That's not an issue at all. But when you're like having the this savings plan, like, you know, you're putting inside every single time 25 euros uh, every single month, then you have to pay a fee of 1.5 percent. So that I think comes down to let's take a look here with 25 euros uh, yeah so that is going to be around 38 cents right so like this is like still not bad at all because if you're paying let's say over the year you're paying like 1.5 percent here um as as a fee for like putting the money inside and you're putting uh let's say 0.2 percent of the managing fee of the fund so like 1.7 percent and you have nine percent there, which is the return that you're getting, you're still like having an additional 7.7%. Minus the inflation, you still have like six. I've also like shared on my Instagram on Brandavise about the top three, like, you know, uh, these uh, trading accounts and everything and how you can like apply for them and so on. But um, one thing is for sure, I mean, with the entire like crisis happening and stuff, like there is like very high chances that you would actually see like a worse inflation than than this like maybe it's like not 1.7 percent maybe it's like up to even like two percent or something that's like highly likely and then if you're still leaving the money in your normal gyro account or just in normal like current account then that is not a very nice thing because your money is just going to lose its value in, in the longer run now put put some money on the side 25 euros 50 euros whatsoever every single month it doesn't matter but like you have to start somewhere now I can take up your questions real quick. So I'll be saying thank you. I'm already following up on Investment Studio on your channel. That's super informative. I hope everything goes well. Life in Germany begins in coming months. Well, I'm really happy to hear that, Abhi. Um, I hope too that everything like runs smoothly because right now it's, yeah, it's not a nice situation for everybody, but it is like a nice situation for the people who want to like take their finances seriously because everything is just like on sale. 
everything is like really cheap if you're like kind of wanting you always wanted to invest like there's really no better time than right now because like the market already kind of hit the bottom and now hopefully like they're going to go up again because this crisis wasn't made because the demand went down but the crisis was made because there was a virus because of which the companies had to like stop working now then uh Anukalp is saying, how long does it take to understand the index market and trends in Germany and how to understand it? So, uh, Anukal, this is actually not um, a big thing at all because like understanding the index um, is something that you have to like keep very simple, right? And that is something like I heavily kind of like emphasize on that whenever you're starting, try to keep things simple. If you're having just 25 euros a month, you don't think about like if you want to have if you have to apply in Apple or Microsoft or Amazon or something like that. You just know that over the longer run, the markets always go up in value because they're always expanding. They're always getting bigger. They're always trying to solve more problems. So this means that you just have to like choose an index and just start investing in that. You can read a bit more about it because like every single uh, index is going to have some kind of information on their website. MSCI has this PDF, which you can like read read about. And then afterwards, you also have SNP, you have the DAX SNP. So I think these are like just maybe for somebody who is like really new, not something very interesting, but SNP is like the index of the top 500 companies in, U in uh, America, who is, you know, um, making the largest sales or having the largest market capitalization uh, the same is for DAX DAX is the German one so DAX tells the story of the top 30 companies who are you know having the maximum revenue so these are the indexes right like these are not one stock but these are the these kind of like show you the value growth of more than one company here in S&P it's 500 in, du in DAX, it's 30. But in MSCI world, and why like so many people choose it, it's because it has 1,640. Like it's really, really, really diversified. That means the volatility is still like really less compared to other kind of scenarios when you're investing in direct stocks. You know, like some people love to use fractional shares and stuff. It's like not so nice because if you have to like kind of transfer your depot, from one person so like from one company let's say you have to transfer the, the depot from uh, comdirect to trade republic many a times fractional shares are not included now so it's just an example uh it's possible like you know you you use trade uh, 212 or like you have etoro or something like that like it, they are like definitely something that are not used in germany and they're because they're like not german uh depot providers you're also not able to like shift the depots very quickly now uh okay then we have Nitin asking is it possible to invest in msci world in germany from india i will be coming in germany in september but want to buy msci world at cheap price right now Nitin, um msci world you can like you know generally like buy from anywhere like even like from india you can invest in different kind of indexes msci world is not something which is like inherent to germany because it is having 64 percent of its companies from us so it is still like if you're investing in MSCI world, you are investing in United States. And then you have 8% of Japan, you have 5% of United Kingdom, you have 4% of France, 3% of Canada, and other is like 15%. So like the Germany's portion is actually like really, really less. No? So you can like still invest in these funds from anywhere. Like you don't have to essentially be in Germany to like invest in these things. Right? Uh, yeah. All right. Yeah, that was um, a, a fun little session. If you have any kind of questions whatsoever, you know, leave it down in the comment section. But uh, definitely start thinking about, you know, investing something aside. Like this is like really important. This is going to like help you out in the future. And at least like you start from somewhere. There could be not a better time than this to like buy things cheap and like kind of like get inside and, you know, start uh, saving up for your future. You know, these things are important. Learn more about it because nobody else will talk talk about this because they themselves, like, do not trust enough to, like, you know, uh, research more about these things. But you're here on the channel. Like, I'm trying to, like, tell you or teach you as much as I can. And um, rest is up to you. No? 
All right then, folks, thanks a lot for watching the video. Um, I'll see you in the next one. And until then, stay safe. And if you have any kind of suggestions, leave it down in the comments. Bye.